Hello guys, this is Shubhishesh. Uh, today we will be starting off a new topic such as T-tube cholangiography. Uh, this is a new topic in the sense that it's a procedure used in surgery and uses the facts of radiology. And so, when mo most of the time when we are seeing cases in our OPD, we will see a person coming with a plate like this and majority of the interns or the students don't know anything about it. So today we will have a basic introduction on this. We will know what is it, what is the procedure, how it is done, what are its uses, uh, the anatomical basis for it, and how to understand the plates given in uh, plates in for this T-tube cholangiography. Now, uh, before we go to the main aspect, we should know a little bit about the anatomy of the liver and the biliary system. And for that, we will see a Netter's image. Here, uh, uh, the liver is seen in a very simplified picture and we can easily distinguish about the left lobe of liver, the right lobe of liver. And so, from the left lobe of liver, the left hepatic duct comes and the right lobe, the right hepatic duct comes, left hepatic duct and right hepatic duct comes. And then, there is the common hepatic duct when it and from this the gallbladder the cystic duct comes it joins with the common hepatic duct from the common bile duct the common bile duct drains into the second part of the duodenum second part of the duodenum and this is the basis or the basic major, uh, ma basic anatomical basis on which the test depends now on this anatomy we will see how different things are done here we usually we will insert a thing like this which is known as a t tube a t tube we will insert it in the common bile duct that is a cvd now why is it inserted when it's inserted it can be also look it can also be like this so the coming to the part where why is it inserted how is it inserted and that facts now for that we should know some basic things such as uh, normally a patient of calculus cholecystitis that is uh, having a stone in gallbladder will present with a different multitude of symptoms and with cholecystitis we mean murphy sign positive etc etc and so when we now when the surgeon operates for that cholecystitis that is goes for either for a open cholecystectomy or a lap cholecystectomy the surgeon usually tries to put a t tube in the common bile duct after the re complete removal of the gallbladder so for the reason the main the most common reason for that is to check if the some residual stones are being left in the common bile duct or after the uh, stumping of the gallbladder is done, we leave a stump usually in, after surgery and when the stumping of the gallbladder is done, no, uh, due to the disease process, pathological process which had form, uh, led to the formation of stones, will it lead to the formation of stones in future? That is, will the uh, common bile duct or right hepatic duct, left hepatic duct or common hepatic duct or, uh, or a part where the common bile duct drains into the the second part of the duodenum will have a stone formation in future or not for that reason we uh, you usually put a, t a t tube during surgery uh, that is a usually an open cholecystectomy operation because in lap cholecystectomy t tubes are very hard to place and usually the lap cholecystectomy operations are minor surgeries and usually in a gallbladder of less than 5 cm in length is uh, removed by lap cholecystectomy because the ports are very much less very much le of less width so for that when we now give uh, t to place a t tube in the co common bile duct as i have shown previously that is this is the t tube placed in a common bile duct or you can see a simplified image drawn by me in this picture we give uh, we usually uh, after this gallbladder is removed it is removed, we give a pulse string suture, characteristic suture, pulse string suture and to li before ligating the both ends of the common bile duct, 
we usually insert a T tube and it is uh, connected with a collecting bag so that any amount of fluid residue can be drained as as soon as possible now the case we i saw today was like was like this she had two tubes uh, one for a draining draining t tube channel and the other for the t tubes other end which goes to a collecting bag uh, for the draining of the serous fluid and etc uh, liver acidic fluid etc and then then uh, the the main function is the t tube is comes after around 10 days of surgery where we perform a test called t tube cholangiography where we see different parts of the same tract as a of the anatomical basis now here is the t tube we see the different parts of the same tract and we see if there is any filling defect present or not after injecting a specific amount of dye now i will come to the proceed main details of the procedure later just to know the basics we inject a dye we see the structures and we see if there is a filling defect or a stone or a calculus or stenosis a dilatation etc present or not and these are the uses for the t-tube cholangiography and this is usually a primitive test which shouldn't be do which we shouldn't be doing nowadays because we have advanced procedures like ERCP that is endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreaticography and MRCP magnetic resonance based cholangiopancreaticography which are one of the best tests for diagnosis of any residual stones, dilatations, etc. But still some surgeons prefer to do it, older surgeons. And now we should know about the process, the procedure. Now, af when after the surgery, when the T-tube is normally placed in the co uh, common bile duct, 10 days later, we see for check for the patency of the T-tube, we inject a dye which is usually non iodinized because iodinization causes a defect or an artifact creation in the images radiographic images and we usually take the 20 ml of the dye we do not inject it simultaneously to 20 ml we give 5 ml for every view we take now the first view we take is a control view that is before the dye is passed that is when the dye is just in the t tube the control view looks a bit like this as we can see here the dye dye is entering and this is the t tube this is the t tube so this is the control setup the first uh, the first of the six images that we as we see in a plate of t tube cholangiography now comes the supine position setup in the supine position setup we give another 5 ml of the dye and the setup comes like a bit like this setup comes a bit like this and here we can see and here we can see the top view of the bilirubin system and the t-tube inserted the common bile duct the right hepatic duct the duodenum etc and then we come to the oblique views and when we change the view as i said before we usually inject four, 5 ml of the dye until the dye fully covers whole of the biliary system and the normal thing about this there are six views the six views being the control supine right oblique left oblique right lateral left lateral now in the six views we see the diff uh, we visualize in different angles the the biliary tree and see look for stenosis dilatation presence of stone now if normally the the intravenous dye that we have injected uh, uh, not the intravenous dye, the t tube injected dye should be draining into the jejunum normally but if there is a presence of filling defect or any other defects we won't be draining into it won't be draining into the jejunum and we have to investigate the cause of the filling defect it can be a stone, it can be a dilatation, it can be a stenosis, etc. Now for that, uh, now this is the basic introduction. Now this is how the T-tube gets inserted and I am sure you have understood the basic things. Now the usually what the surgeons see is the most easy view because 
they are not interested in the radiological part of it the most easy view being the right oblique view the right oblique view shows the left hepatic duct right hepatic duct the common hepatic duct the cystic duct part of the cystic duct if there is some present or if completely removed then no part of the cystic duct in the common bile duct the t tube and the drainage into the duodenum this view completely clears uh, itself and we can see the filling defect perfectly here so it looks like a bit like this and here we can see this is the t tube going that is this is the left hepatic duct left hepatic duct the right hepatic duct the cvd and this is the part of the duodenum where it drains now this is the this is this contrast is known as white on black contrast and this is the black on white contrast the same thing in a black on white contrast now i have leveled the paths here as we can see here the colas here we have here we have removed the colas colas cystectomy has already been done has already been the gallbladder is removed and the stump is present stump is present the hepatic duct this being the common hepatic duct this is the common hepatic duct this is the common bile duct the t tube is inserted here and we can see it clearly in this image you can see clearly in this image the right hepatic duct left hepatic duct common bile duct and a common hepatic duct and this is the part of the duodenum where it drains so this is a normal T tube cholangiography, TTC. Now, these are the main things of the T tube cholangiography. We have known about the how the procedure, the views, the six views, the uses, and a bit of the supplies that we should know is it is different for liver transplant patients and non-liver transplant patients. Do we usually follow the procedure of non liver transplant patients the it is a water soluble contrast we use iso view 30 uh, butterfly needle a 50 cc syringe an iv tubing and a run conduit tubing to clear the air now what are the other investigations that can be, that can be utilized to visualize the ducts the biliary tree the best uh, which i consider best is the mrcp magnetic cholangio pancreatography it is the best investigation we do not have to inject any dye we do not have to um, place a t tube we just uh, we just have a intravenous dye injected and it's it gives a characteristic effect and we have the ptc and the primitive investigation the percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography where the dye is injected to skin into the bile bile ducts within the liver intrahepatic bile ducts and it is always usg guided usg guided now another investigation modern investigation is endoscopic retrograde cholangio pancreaticography as i said before the dye is injected again injected in the common bile duct and it's passed down endoscope until it, and we have the endoscope passes on our throat until it reaches the duodenum and we see uh it is a reverse procedure we usually pass the endoscope to the throat then then it goes to the du second part of duodenum then we then it goes retrograde in the direction to reach the uh biliary system and that's concludes our lecture for today thank you Have a good day.